What's going on, Badger Nation? Welcome to the PPC Den Podcast, your home for all things Amazon PPC tips, strategies. Uh, and today we've got an I hyped up Stephen Pope. Stephen, what's up? <laughs> I went on I went on a radio show yesterday, and the guy just like just has this ritual when he gets into his podcast. I was trying it; it's really awkward for me because I'm not like I don't actually have an intro podcast mm-hmm. thing. I don't, mm-hmm. but uh, you do, you do. What's, What's going, going on? on? Yes. Yeah, you do that every single time. Well, it's a pleasure to be here, guys. Yes, if you want to hype up ritual, uh, one thing I do before I speak in person anywhere, uh, I read this great book, it's called Breathe, last year, uh, and it said one of the worst things you can do before you give a presentation or do something that is gonna require some some adrenaline, some pump up, is to breathe slowly uh, because it'll calm you down too much and then it'll be too jarring once you start. So like doing something that pumps you up, like quick breathing or like doing push-ups uh, will get the heart rate up, making it not so jarring when you go to do that presentation in front of people. So there's my, there's my, uh, my presentation work tip for everybody out there. That's a good one. And if you haven't read Traction yet, read that book. Ooh, so good. <laughs> so good. We're talking talking books. All right, guys. So today we are going to talk about a new SEO phase. Yes. When, when Michael and I revealed some of the best work that I have ever done, some of the best work he's ever done, mm-hmm. it was SEO phases one through three. I still have my new hires watch that. Yes. That's how good it was. Mm-hmm. I honestly do believe that that is the best Amazon SEO content in the world. Therefore, most likely in the universe, uh, <laughs> which is a big claim. They're an Amazon on another galaxy. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. That, that that there's your existential crisis of the morning watching the podcast. An alternative universe where you are from Ad Badger and I'm from my Amazon oh. guy. Well, let's let's go into the multiverse Spider-Man style yes. and let's reference the other series that we also did. This was not planned. Mm-hmm. And that was who is your cast to run your Amazon business? <laughs> yes. Um, I, I memed Michael into the Hulk. You can find that picture mm-hmm. online. Yes. <laughs> Gotta need the Hulk to carry your inventory. Um, so... Stephen, the three-part series that we did previously, where we talked about phase one, working on our indexing, phase two, working on our pink word updates, phase three, going after sort of strike zone, sort of advanced strike zone SEO was great. We're linking to it in the show notes. If you have not listened to it, I weekly recommend this out. And even still, months and months, months later, I'm still getting positive feedback for that. They're like, whoa, that series of episodes blew my mind. Um, I give it to everyone I talk to who is a PPC customer of ours because SEO and PPC fuel each other like you wouldn't believe you get better SEO, you get better, uh, you inadvertently improve your ACoS, you inadvertently improve your total ACoS. So a lot of times when people say, oh, my total ACoS is too high, I'm spending too much relative to my total revenue, I say, hey, that's great, let's work on your Amazon PPC, but did you know you have this huge, gigantic other lever to pull on to improve things, which is, of course, Amazon SEO, which is why I will always have you back on the show to talk Amazon SEO. It's an incredible hack to get more sales, but also it's an incredible hack to inadvertently improve two major Amazon PPC metrics, which of course are uh, your ACoS and your total ACoS. So awesome, awesome having you here. Michael, I've got an easy question for you. Give it to me. If if PPC was an animal, what animal would it be? Ooh, I mean, I unfortunately the first thing that came to my mind was a badger. Um, uh, that, uh, that, that was why it was an easy yes, question. Yes. I wanted to get badger. Okay, <laughs> yeah. okay, now ask me what animal SEO should be. What animal should SEO be? A beaver. Nice. Eager beaver. So beavers and badgers, I don't mm-hmm. know if they hang out, but they should. Yes. Um, and so I just changed some of the core values at my Amazon guy, which is why I picked the beaver. Yes. We are the eager beavers. And yes. I rebranded the term impatience. Mm-hmm into eager beaver Mm. and i mentioned traction in the intro and if you don't know in traction it says you're supposed to pick five core values Mm -hmm. so eagerness yes 
is the newest core value at my Amazon guy. I love it. Eager beaver. Eager beaver. It's a, it's a great business hack to have animals incorporated in your company's uh, mission, vision, name, because they come with built-in uh, branding Brand equity. right away. Yeah. Well, I, I got to tell you, the memes in my Slack random channel with all the beaver posts, mm -hmm. it's getting out of hand. Yes. There's also a new Steam game called Timberborn. Mm -hmm. So for the nerds out there who want to play with beavers, there's a civilization game now. No way. I went ahead and gifted it out to all of my Steam gamers at my company. I took the fuel of the beaver meme and went with it. And I was like, if, if the badger works for Michael, the beaver's going to work for me. Yes. All right, so Eager Beaver episode, here we go. Yes. Today we're talking about SEO phase zero. But before we do that, we need to recap what is SEO phase one, two, and three. Please do. So as quickly as possible, SEO phase one, this is about setting the search term field and mass indexing. Your title, bullets, and A-plus content all need to be optimized during this phase. Phase two is the pink keyword update sometimes called the Dennis Robin update. And this is in the brand analytics dashboard where it tells you your search term field already has, some of the words in the search term field are already present in the title and the bullets, so you can safely remove them. We do include them on purpose during phase one because we found it indexes your keywords faster. But when we get to phase two, right around day 30 to day 60, we swap them out. One thing that a lot of people don't realize, you can swap your keywords out mm. and maintain past performances. Say it again. Say it again for the people in the back. You can maintain your keyword rankings by swapping out past high performing keywords for new underperforming, soon to be performing keywords. Amen. And so phase three, this is when you throw the rules out of every phase that preceded it and you just go for the strike zone. And we talked about baseball in our, in our last episode. My next newest core value at my Amazon guy ties right into this, and that is get on base. And we talked about last episode where you need to have, you need to have, you need to play your SEO like the athletics because you can't beat the Red Sox without the money or without the quants, right? And so in phase three, we talk about using uh, strike zone keywords, so that baseball metaphor continues today. Any keyword that's in ranks 20 through 50, choose three to five of those at a time and push them up to rank one through 10. And you, you focus on them in every single field. So you're gonna actually duplicate those keywords, exact match, search term fields, title, bullets, A plus content, alt text, everything included. So that's the recap. That's your phase one through three recap. And if you haven't watched those phases yet from the other podcasts, watch them after you complete this one. You mm -hmm. can listen to this phase zero first. In fact, it'll probably make more sense if you do. Yes. So let's actually get into SEO phase zero. We've got our recap and you have this. I love acronyms. You have it. You're, we're going to be building an MKL. Walk us through what an MKL is is and how to build it. This is your master keyword list, MKL, master keyword list. Mm -hmm. And the reason you want to put this together is because you can't just simply trust the SEO tools to do your search terms, can you? Mm -hmm. As we proved mm -hmm. in our last episode, bytes versus characters style. So if you can't trust the SEO tools, you need to make your own master keyword list. When you say that, uh, and I just want to wrap my head around this concept. So what I think you're saying is like when you go and you like punch a seed keyword into an SEO tool or you punch a product into an SEO tool, they're going to spit out a whole bunch of keywords. What I think you're saying is what that spits out from that, that seed, we want to not necessarily just copy and paste everything. We want to do so need some massaging. We're going to be massaging this data. Okay. I just want to wrap my head around it. Gone. Sorry to interrupt. You basically can't just take these seeds of data and information from an SEO tool of your choice, Helium 10, Jungle Scout, Zongru, whatever you want, right? You can't just take these seeds and just throw them on the ground and expect to have an entire crop of corn to work, right? In Interstellar, everybody was planting corn, right? Everybody. And that's exactly the same concept you need to think about is you, you can't just can't just push a button, throw some seed on the ground and expect things to happen. So in phase zero, here's what you do. You pick 10 
competitor products. I've already lost half the audience. You mean I actually have to do some work? Yes. Ten to, yes, you do. Yes. 10. I didn't say two. I didn't say five. I said 10. Mm -hmm. 10 competitor products per ASIN. So that means you need 10 competitor products per ASIN when you make this master keyword list. That's a lot of work. I know it is, but you can do it. Once you pick 10 competing products, you're gonna throw these into your keyword tool of choice. We use X-Ray from Helium 10, and you're gonna click Cerebro's button and X-Ray buttons to see what tools, what products are the highest converting in your category. First of all, that's how you identify the first 10, by the way, is you use X-Ray to identify which 10 would make the most sense. These are generally high BSR products in golf, technically lower, but they're doing really well, okay? So let's say you're gonna sell a soap and you wanna go look at the top 10 soaps in your niche. So in my niche, I have Age of Sage as my soap bar and I'm selling a handmade, hand-cut, American-made artisan soap. Nobody searches for the term artisan soap, however. About 10,000 people a month do search for the term Star Wars soap. There is no Star Wars soap on Amazon, by the way. Mm. <laughs> so, so I'm sharing my best kept secret, and the way I'm gonna try and go to market on that concept came from running this MKL mm -hmm. tool. And so when you think about like how to measure success here, when you do this correctly, you're going to identify keywords you would not have otherwise identified and you're gonna rank them from the most important to least important. So one of the discoveries that we had from this last month was that 10,000 people search for Star Wars soap on Amazon and there is literally no Star Wars soap on Amazon. So, interesting. Mm -hmm. What should I do about that? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm coming out with a galactic box of soap. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna have, you know, two blackish looking soaps, get some Darth Vader and some Stormtroopers maybe, and some two light colored soaps, get some Jedi action going there, mm -hmm. right? Like maybe maybe some mint green for some mm -hmm. lightsaber action, mm -hmm. yeah, you know? I'm gonna call it the Mandalorian season three, mm -hmm. even though it's actually Boba Fett season two, because that's exactly what it is. They just like randomly mid season just inserted, here's, here's Mandalorian season three, mm -hmm. have fun. And, uh, <laughs> None of this was planned. This storyline wasn't planned at all. Uh, but I got to tell you, it's the, the, those two episodes, episode six and episode seven. So if you're looking for some weekend uh, watching shows, those are really good episodes. Go go watch Boba Fett, Book of Boba Fett, or as like uh, as I like to call it, Mandalorian season three. But back on topic, MKL. I've lost I've lost Michael. Michael, help 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 me find me. <laughs> um, I, I'm thinking of a Star Wars reference to to. Bring up the hologram in, of for in, in post. Are you going to do lightsaber sounds? Please do lightsaber sounds in post. Play the lightsaber sound. <laughs> <laughs> or 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 don don da da. Give me some Star Wars action. All right, all right. Back to topic here. MKL master keyword list. So let me just uh, recap where we are in this process already. So. In SEO phase one, we were talking about like the infrastructure of where keywords go. They go in your title, they go in your description, they go in your A plus content, they go in your search term field. What this allows us to do is to determine what words should even be going in these places. You got it. And a no brainer way to do it is 10 competitor products, 10 top competitor products. And I know that you mentioned, uh, you know, using third party tools, but a lot of times, you know, you can get some of this intel right from Amazon, like brand analytics. It'll tell you like conversion share for a lot of terms these days, just giving people some further ideas. But you grab these 10 products, you find out what terms they're ranking for, grabbing those top 10 keywords of those top 10 competitor products. So now I have a list of about 100 terms. Um, I have to imagine that some of this, there will be some overlap, right? Like product A, might have some commonality of their top 10 keywords with product B. Uh, is that generally what you find? And when people think about like, hey, how do I grow my sales on Amazon, right? Which is literally the entire point of the existence of my own agency is yeah. to grow sales on Amazon, yeah. right? So is yours. And, and so the fastest way to grow sales is to add more product. Second fastest, spend more on PPC. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to add product on Amazon, how should you be doing this? Should you add more variations? Eh. Or should you be adding more new products? Correct. Mm -hmm. and, and so 
if you aren't going the extra mile here to really get on base with your keywords by going in depth and doing this sheer high volume amount of work, your athletics baseball team, which is underfunded and understaffed, is not going to beat the Red Sox a la the Amazon aggregators. And so you have to do this work. You've got to find 10 competing products per SKU. So it's cool. If one's black, one's white, or one's small, one's large, can, can you copy the MK over for those? 100%. But if it's slightly different, if you have the most frequently bought product different or, or, or frequently viewed and then purchased product on the Amazon detail page, and that's a different competitor to ASIN 1 to ASIN 2, you need to rerun this entire thing for both of them. So seed keywords, these are, these are keywords that are going to help you figure out like, okay, what's the most important keywords? Well, the way you choose your seed keyword or your seed keywords is by looking up 10 competing products and seeing what do all 10 of these products rank for in the top 10 of the search results, one through 10. How does this relate to overall indexation? Because a lot of times when we talk about launching a product, SEOing a product, we often think of indexing and the list there will be, you know, thousands of keywords potentially. Um, can you connect the dots between how we think about this master keyword list, which, you know, at maximum is a hundred because 10 competitors, their top 10 keywords is a hundred terms compared to the overall indexation. Can you uh, connect that for the listener? So first of all, what is indexing? Mm -hmm. Indexing is showing up for a keyword in the top 300 results on Amazon. That means that if the consumer went to Amazon right now and typed in uh, men's soap, they would find my product within the top 300 search results for that. Okay. Now, luckily, I'm on page one for men's soap. So I don't need to go down to the, the, the gutters of SEO and rank 100 through 300. Nobody clicks there anyway, less than 1%. But a lot of people are like, well, I only care if I'm in rank one through three, right? Let's say you're a corporation listening to this. You're, you're just the SEO manager or you're the marketing manager, the brand account manager, whoever you are. And your CEO just sends you an angry email with a screenshot and says, why aren't we rank one? Why aren't we rank one here? This is the term I care about. And you go look at the, the, the data and that search volume keyword is 55 a month. And you're like, great, now I got to spend all this time trying to rank this product for keyword juice on a product that's got 55 impressions a month. What a waste of time. This is where the art of persuasion can come in handy. And I've been in these boardrooms before, like multi-billion dollar company boardrooms where I show the damn data and the people still make the wrong decision. It's not sufficient for you to win with data, in my opinion, on SEO. It's, there's so much data available, it's incredibly amazing how much SEO data is available. Because like 15 years ago, I would have to pay $5,000 a month to get keyword tracking data on Google for my website. And today, it's commoditized all the way down to like 100 bucks a month with an Amazon keyword tool. It's amazing the amount of data that we have. But there's data paralysis that occurs during this. And so the question of like, okay, how many keywords should I index for? Usually around 1,000 keywords by phase one. And how quickly can I index for them? And you know, if I've got a competitor product who's at 5,000 keywords, how long will it take me to match them? And in a best case scenario, we're like, you know, 60 days. Best case mm -hmm. scenario. Realistic scenario, six months. Mm -hmm. So... And that's just to index. Right. I didn't say matriculate the keyword ranking a la strike zone phase three. This was just to index match your competitor. Mm -hmm. Now, now I do have a pretty good track record of being able to launch a product and rank it really fast. I have an Age of Sage mom box where it comes with this wine tumbler and some soap and it's got a Mother's Day card. And I launched it last Mother's Day and in three weeks, we generated $144,000 in sales, $11,000 in PPC spend to make that happen. And I indexed it for 3,500 keywords by day 20. That is the exceptional 
best track record you could possibly find. It's unrealistic to replicate. I had a lot of things going for mm -hmm. it, right? The search term data behind the system drastically went up year over year, three years in a row, right? It beat the COVID highs. It went up higher. It went almost two X the COVID highs. People were looking for gifts for mom on Amazon. So that's kind of like the, the metric of how you would measure success is whether you can match the indexing quickly. So a competitor is going to have a huge leg up on you the longer their product exists on Amazon. Mm -hmm. Very hard to catch up. Yeah. Thank you for that sort of rundown of, of that. So, so I believe what you're saying is that when you build this master keyword list, top 10 competitors with their top 10 keywords, you will also just by the very nature of building your product titles, building your A plus content, building all these things around going after PPC keywords that are related to this master keyword list, you will begin to index for far more than just the things that are on your master keyword list. Correct. Here's one small example. If you did a, in the mom box example that I shared, I spent of my $11,000 in PPC in three weeks, I spent 5,000 of that on one broad match keyword, mm -hmm. gifts for mom, mm -hmm. $5,000, one broad match keyword. And that one keyword broad match in PPC was the number one key to success yeah. in my ranking of the product. Even if I didn't understand SEO and I'd still did the PPC, I probably would have had a hundred thousand dollar product in three weeks, but I had $144,000 in sales because I did all the SEO things. I had everything optimized from day one. I had the A plus content. I was live in FBA. I had the title fully baked. I'd run my MKL. I had done all my research. It's taking a lot longer to explain the MKL than I anticipated, Michael. Well, I mean, it's, it seems so valuable, yeah. It is, it is. Here's some additional tips. When you think about which keywords are the most important in your, your master keyword list, you need to rank them. You can sh shrink out to single word versus phrase. We talked about the broad match there where you might have you know, three word series in a search term. You need to sort these keywords by impression counts. You need to sort the keywords by potential revenue targets, right? So one keyword might be really, really high and it has more sales generated from it than another keyword which has a medium search volume but has higher amount of revenue. So, so there's some opportunities with, with the keywords that you choose and what you do. So when we think about the MKL and, and what kind of constraints or criteria you're trying to use, you're gonna sort them by most valuable to least valuable. What we do is we add in another column and rank these products, rank these search terms that is. So 10, these are the seed keywords that you know have to be utilized. That is 100% gonna make the title with an exact match, 100% chance. Then you're gonna start going nines and eights and sevens. There should not be very many tens, by the way. We're talking less than three or five, probably. You get, get into some nines, you might have eight or nine of those. Get into some eights, you might have 20 of those. Seven, six, five, four, three, you're, get, you're getting down. And honestly, generally speaking, your your entire SEO plan is probably not gonna get past right around six. So you're gonna rank all of these, but the reason you go past the six is because later on, you're gonna rotate out the keywords that you succeeded on. And you're gonna put in some of the other terms that are on your master keyword list that you haven't even attempted to index for yet. So rotational SEO strategy is extremely important. You wouldn't spend $10,000 on a PPC campaign and never optimize it, never change the bids, never adjust the budget, never try a new keyword, right? Same thing applies in SEO. You're gonna spend all this time, you're gonna put 20 hours into building out your search term optimization. Of course, you're gonna go back and tweak it. So you're gonna make what we like to call the MAG score for your SEO and you're gonna base that on all of the criteria that we talked about. You're gonna create a filter, you're gonna rank everything, and then you're gonna try and build the search term field. So this is great. Uh, like what an easy way to help prioritize all of the keyword data that you can using data that is right there in front of you related to competitors. Ranking these 
internally, like I can easily, I can see the Google sheet of this process. Top 10 competitor products, top 10 keywords, add in some extra column, columns about search volume. You can play around even with some brand analytics data from Amazon. You can play around with product opportunity analysis from Amazon and start to extrapolate like potential conversion upside for all of these. I love the concept too, that as you focus in on these top 10 of the top 10, you will also begin indexing for a lot of related terms for this master keyword list. So I love this process so far. And then of course, once you go into phase one, that's where we talk about starting to use these things, uh, like putting them in the search term field, putting them in the title, putting them where the keywords go to boost your SEO. SEO phase zero is your research phase. You haven't put anything in anywhere. You're just collecting information. And, and what we realized when we, when we went out with our SEO phases one, two, and three, we, we were talking about the actions to take, but we weren't talking about the how to back the data up or, or the why we selected which keywords. And that's why we're coming out with phase zero, which is the research phase master keyword list. And can you just quickly run through those extra columns that you look at to help rank the top 10 of the top 10 keywords? So you're going to be looking at impression counts, mm -hmm. potential revenue. Mm -hmm. and, and then here's the one that's really super important. How many times does a competitor show up in the top one through 10 for this keyword? So you should have a number one through 10 on that. Is this keyword that's 10,000 search volume a month showing up one time. So it's only one out of 10 competitors or is it showing up eight times? Now, depending on your niche and the top 10 competitors that you chose, your numbers could be all over the place, right? And that's okay because you're only, the, the, it's a relative comparison, right? So there should be no keyword on your top of your list getting the rank 10 for best and must use keyword unless it is in the highest search volumes, the most potential revenue, and the most competitors rank in the top one mm -hmm. through 10 for it. So those are the most important things. Understood. And I, and I know like this is just the research phase and you did mention about, you know, how long realistically it would take to rank on a one-to-one -one basis. Like if your competitors indexed for, you know, 5,000 keywords, maybe take you about six months to, to rank for that many. It can be done. Index. 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 In just index. It and matriculating the ranking may take even longer. Mm -hmm. uh, and we talked about some shortcuts about like where to put these terms later down the road, but this really does give you the sense of like where to put these terms. A plus content, title, description, all these things. Go after PPC with these terms because you know that they're of such high value. And we've talked about that previously on the show, good and plenty. Top two shortcuts, heavy amounts of PPC and heavy amounts of text. Mm -hmm. A plus content indexes. Throw 500 words of copy into your A plus content. Mm -hmm. It does. It indexes. Trust me. Try it. Yes, sir. And then when it comes to the one final note on indexing. So, you know, I just mentioned 5,000 indexed terms. Uh, do know that there's a difference between paid keywords that you're going after that you're indexed for and paid PPC keywords that you're indexed for and organic terms that you're indexed for uh, at a ratio of about one to two. When you first start out in the first six months, are you saying that there's more terms that you're indexed for for PPC or SEO? You're going to have 300 keywords you're going to index on PPC for, but you may only have one or two SEO keywords mm -hmm. that you organically index for. Mm -hmm. By day 30, there should be uh, some parity, one-to-one -one minimum, but ideally a listing that's been around for three plus months, you want a one-to-two ratio. Now, this isn't going to be a perfect ratio for every category. There's obviously going to be exceptions. My favorite thing is to do PPC AMAs, and the first thing that you always answer is, well, it depends mm -hmm. on pretty much any any yeah. PPC question, mm -hmm. right? So same thing applies here with this ratio. But at the end of the day, you want to shoot for one organic keyword for every, for excuse me, one PPC keyword for every two organic keywords. And that is a one to two ratio of PPC to SEO because there's probably 50% of your SEO keywords that are not worth paying money for because you can't do so profitably at an ACOS. But if you could rank in the top 10 in the SERPs, organically, you want those sales. It's free 
sales. You would not have generated otherwise. So that's why I like that ratio. Um, usually, you know, a listing that's been around three, five, six months, if you see parity between these two, PBC and SEO, it's almost always because there's a problem with the indexing and the organic. Hmm. When we do our next episode, Michael, I would love to talk about a giant SEO checklist and a list of prohibited keywords you should not use. I joked with Michael before we shot this that we should make that into a wrap because nobody actually wants to read the list of prohibited keywords and do it like Pokemon style. We'll see if that happens. Like, gotta catch them all, gotta catch them all. Don't use words that will get your list yanked. Rap, which I'm not a rapper and I'm too white, but there are we'll many see. prohibited keywords. That'll be a long, long song. <laughs> It'd be a very long song, but there's just a general checklist that I think people need to do uh, to think about when they run through all all four of our SEO phases, phase zero included. Whether you're trying to do your research in phase zero, whether you're trying to index in, in SEO phase one, or incrementally index in phase two, or matriculate your strike zone keywords in phase three. So there's a lot of checklist things that we've come up with that we'd love to share. I think that's perfect. So we sort of laid the groundwork down for the theoretical practice. I would go as far to say like we've we've laid out what you should do and where to think about those starting terms. And then if we can further extend the SEO theme here uh, in the next episode, have that checklist, I think that's icing on the cake. We can bring it down from, hey, do these things which people may have slightly different interpretations of it. But the checklist to be sure that all the I's are dotted and the T's are crossed, I think would be phenomenal. And thank you for your generosity there. So I love this concept of a master keyword list. I find so many people get so overwhelmed with keyword research tools. Uh, and now that Amazon is rolling out their own internal keyword research tools, it's, very, it's even easier to get overwhelmed. And a lot of times people will just punch in one seed like they'll type in one word or they'll type in one competitor and they'll get this list. But what I think is so fascinating about this master keyword list of sort of top 10 competitors, their top 10 keywords, it really allows you to get a comprehensive view that these are the terms that are most impactful for you and the industry and the market that you're in. Um, so I love this concept. I think it's really going to help people uh, shortcut their path to having a better understanding of keywords that matter because so many times i'll see people that have these gigantic lists you know 500 terms long that they got from one seed and you know when you're generating a list that long you can often go a little off track uh, and start to see some terms that maybe don't make as much sense as it should so i love the distilling that you get to do with these long lists where you're comparing the top 10 of the top 10 i think this is a uh, an awesome little strategy that uh, is now. It's all about discoverability, mm -hmm. right? What's the number one job you have as a marketer? Be findable. Mm -hmm. If you can't be findable, nothing else matters. The yes. conversion could be 100%, but if nobody can find you, oh, wait, that sounds like another podcast topic we might shoot. Traffic versus conversion. What comes first, chicken or the egg? Mm. We might do one on that one too. Um, Steven, I think this master keyword list idea will definitely, definitely improve people's SEO game. This is a great addition to our SEO phases about where to get those starting keywords when you before, right before you go into SEO phase one. Super appreciate you coming back on the show. I think every PPC -er becomes a better Amazon marketer by learning about Amazon SEO as well. Uh, they really do propel each other. Any final thoughts about, obviously, Everyone knows you on the show, Stephen Pope, my Amazon guy. Anything else that you'd like to leave people with today? Get on base. That's it. Just, just change something, do something today. Do some more research. If you only looked at one or two competitors, look at four or five. Maybe mm -hmm. you can't do all 10 yet. You don't have the time. You're, you're, you're running. You're more worried about your logistics and whether something's going to be in stock. Mm -hmm. I get it. But if you want to run the athletics team and make the World Series and beat the Red Sox, Here's what you got to do. It was a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so much. Ad Badger Nation. I love you guys. Uh, hope you allow the beaver to join the badger. Yes. Have a good one, Stephen. Thank you so much. We'll see you.